sadness, difficulty concentrating, loss of interest, depression can be treated. The first step is talking. Welcome to Healthy Cleveland. I'm your host, Leah Haslidge. Today, our topic is on health literacy. Our guest is Jessica Jersak, who is the Healthy Cleveland Initiative Coordinator with the Cleveland Department of Public Health, and Karen Commander, who is the Director of Organizational Development and the Health Literacy Institute with St. Vincent Charity Medical Chair, and the co-chair of HCI Health Literacy Committee, and the president of Ohio Health Literacy Partners. Welcome, ladies. So let's start off by talking about what is health literacy? Well, health literacy, really the definition has been evolving. The field isn't really all that old, probably about 20 years really when the focus started coming on and realizing that this was even an issue. Um, so the original definition and the one that's most widely used now is that Health literacy is the degree to which individuals have the capacity to obtain, process, understand basic health information and services needed to make appropriate health decisions. But there the onus is on the individuals. So really it was viewed from a patient's lack of knowledge and skills to interact with health issues. But now it's recognized that health literacy is a systems issue. It needs to be bi-directional, it needs to be um, providers need to be aware of health literacy and explain things in a way that patients can understand. And also health systems. Uh, health systems have to make health literacy a, pr a priority and make sure that information is shame-free, have easy access, plain language. So it, it's all about embedding health literacy in organizations as well. Do you think that that is a very common issue with maybe it's all medical jargon and, and such and so people are understanding but they're afraid to speak up? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, if you're talking about um, patients awareness, uh, really right now an issue is that many patients will go to their physician's office or whatever provider that they happen to see and often the challenge is it's time limited, oftentimes don't speak up because they're afraid that they're gonna bother or they're gonna appear stupid, they feel intimidated. And I've seen this even with um, close friends. I recently had a call from a, a close friend who is a chemical engineer and PhD and she called and said she didn't understand a word her doctor said when she was at the visit and she was intimidated to ask. So it's a common problem. Mm -hmm. What does health literacy look like here in Cleveland? Is it an issue? Well, health literacy is an issue really everywhere. It affects all of us. And I think that um, those with low literacy skills certainly are more challenged. Um, and that was the primary focus in years past. We focused only on those folks with low literacy skills. But now I, we understand that it affects everyone. Um, mm -hmm. And I like to use the analogy of computer literacy to help people understand or financial literacy. So we need to think the same way when we're talking about health literacy. So if health is not your field, anybody can have uh, misunderstandings or face confusion when they're met up with the healthcare system. So what's being done then to help promote health literacy? Well, I can start and then I'll let Jessica chime in, but right now um, we're trying, okay? It's, it's, a, it's an issue everywhere. And I'm finding with, with colleagues, they're still not really aware of health literacy as an issue. But I can tell you at St. Vincent, we've been doing the work for, um, well, since 2007 when we received a grant from the Sisters of Charity Foundation. The goal was to um, institutionalize health literacy across the continuum of patient care. 
And I can say that right now we really have achieved that goal. Um, it's really how literacy principles are embedded in our policies. So it's required that all caregivers use plain language when we speak with patients. Um, we use a principle called teach back, where we ask patients to explain back in their own words what they've learned to ensure they understand uh, before the session is ended. Um, we also partnered with adult learner students to evaluate our signage in the hospital because it was mm -hmm. very confusing. So based on their responses, we have new signage. Um, so since we've been doing this work for such a long time, we've been called upon to um, really help out with training in other area institutions, healthcare centers, locally, statewide, and even nationally. And Jessica? Yes, at the Cleveland Department of Public Health, we've been doing a lot of training. Uh, we've done some health literacy training with our Moms First community health worker staff because they're at the front line working with the population out in the field. Um, so we did some training to make sure they knew health literacy techniques that they're using. Uh, we've also done some training with our um, department program manager staff. Um, we had Karen come and do some, some overview training of health literacy. Um, and with the Healthy Cleveland Initiative on our Healthy Cleveland website, which is healthycle.org, um, on our Health Literacy Committee page, we have a Health Literacy Basics webinar um, that Karen is actually the voiceover for. Um, but one of our interns put together this webinar to explain what health literacy is, what some of the misconceptions are, um, and just to give an overview. So anybody out in the public is, is welcome to go view that and learn more about it. That's great. Now, what is the Healthy Cleveland Initiative? The Healthy Cleveland Initiative, it's an initiative of the Cleveland Department of Public Health. Um, and we are the community engagement and health promotion arm of the department. It was actually started back in 2011 as a city council initiative um, that moved over to the health department in 2013 um, with a new city council resolution and new direction. Um, so how it's structured right now is that we have seven different health topic committees. Um, and each of these committees are made up of local government, community partners, healthcare workers, um, education, and anybody in the community that wants to be a part of it that's interested in learning more is welcome to reach out to us and be a part of it as well. Uh, so we're very inclusive of anyone that is interested. Um, so each committee, the seven different topics, there's active living, there's breathe free, uh, behavioral health, healthy eating, healthy neighborhoods, violence prevention, and then health literacy, which is our topic today. Uh, but each of those committees sets annual goals around policy, advocacy, programming, health promotion, um, and then they work together on strategies to, to realize those goals. Now, if someone wanted to be a part of that, what exactly would they be doing? Is it just like a volunteer for certain things? Is it, like, what would be their capacity? Yeah, they could be as involved as they want. Um, most committees meet either monthly or bi-monthly, um, and you can reach out to the co-chairs of the committees through our website, depending on whichever one you're interested in. Um, and then we meet monthly or bi-monthly. We work through those goals, set our strategies, anything that we need help with and need resources for. Everybody works together to, to realize those. That's great. Now, every October, you start celebrating uh, Health Literacy Awareness Month. Can you mm -hmm. talk to us about that? Yeah, well, at uh, St. Vincent, we've tried to, um, in October, do different activities. We've done uh, contests where we put them on our intranet and have people submit that, and then we'd have drawings. Um, we have different trainings that we do to highlight uh, health literacy again through the month of October. Um, we do our annual competencies in October and include health literacy as part of our competencies as well. And then this month we've done yes, through the quite Healthy a bit Cleveland through the Healthy Cleveland yeah. Initiative. We're doing yeah. a lot this month. Um, we have some things out in the community. Uh, so we have some wallet cards, which we call them wallet cards because they fold up to be about the size of a business card. So they fit right in your wallet and you can keep them with, them, with you wherever you go. Um, and they're tips, um, we say, uh, tips for better health. So it's what to do to prepare for a doctor's appointment, what to do once you get there, um, and just to encourage you and to empower you to ask those questions to be a voice for your own health care once you get to the doctor. Um, so those cards are out there at various locations in the community. Um, and then we also have some posters up in the Omnimedia kiosks, the street level kiosks mm -hmm. around the community. Um, same thing, promoting Health Literacy Month, promoting what health literacy is and empowering our community. Um, and then what else? We have a big social media campaign going on. So Healthy Cleveland has a Facebook, an Instagram, and a Twitter account. Um, and we have posts daily going out um, through all of our social media sites. So if you're not following us already, um, <laughs> it's Healthy CLE. 
for Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're putting out posts all month long. And even past the month, you have events and stuff going on that people are encouraged to attend, mm -hmm. right? Yes, yes. We have conferences um, that we've, we've had, and what we're planning, you know, our focus here through Healthy Cleveland is reaching the community. Um, but because it is by directional, um, we also need to focus on the providers. So I think the training with the program managers um, was a good thing to, to start. Um, we're going to encourage everyone to look at a toolkit called uh, Health Literacy Champions Toolkit, which helps health departments uh, set up their departments and policies to address health literacy. So. Oh, great. Yeah. Got to get the providers involved. Definitely. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the biggest misconception when it comes to health literacy? Well, I think that, well, from the provider side, I think it's, it's when folks hear health literacy, they think, oh, that's just, you know, for people with low literacy skills. As a matter of fact, I spoke with a colleague not long ago, and she said, she works at a, a suburban hospital, and she said, oh, you don't, we don't have to worry about that here. You're downtown. So you have to worry about it there. So there's really a lot of misconceptions about what health literacy really is. Um, and then from the patient perspective, um, I think that some folks just aren't aware. You know, So I think that we have to get the word out there. Um, because really, it's a patient safety issue. Um, I'd like to share one story. You know, in my conferences that I do, I always ask for someone to share a story. Because that really, I think, uh, is an aha moment. Mm -hmm. And I had an instance where I had one nurse stand up and she shared that when she was discharging a patient, going home on the blood thinner Coumadin. And she said, I thought it was really clear on my instructions, the fact that he had to, you know, take, um, take, take his medicine and um, go and get his blood work done every week and um, also what diet he had to follow. But she ended it by saying, you know, you've got to make sure you take all the medicine until it's gone. Well, the patient was readmitted that week and just bleeding. Oh. And um, it turns out that he listened to her literally and took all of the medicine that first night. Oh. So that's one nurse sharing one story at one conference. And it really is a common issue. Um, so I mm -hmm. just think that it's really critical that we start you know, addressing this yeah. primarily with providers. You know, working with uh, medical students and uh, medical residents recently, so got to start, you know, yeah. before they even get into practice. And the talking so. back technique that you explained earlier where, you know, they, the provider says what to do and then yeah. you explain back is a, is a great technique. Is there any other kinds that are useful for patients and providers when trying to make sure they, you know, are literate in what they need to do. Right, primarily we want to look at the materials we send out. You know, the average American reads at a fifth grade level, or an eighth grade level, I'm sorry, but 20% read at a fifth grade level, and a lot of our materials are written at 10th grade or above. So it's important that organizations, providers, provide materials at an average sixth grade level. And that doesn't mean that we're dumbing down, we don't use that word, we talk right. about transferring across. So that, because everybody appreciates, health, especially health information, yeah. in clear language. Um, also teaching providers to use plain language when they're speaking. So uh, some examples we give are, instead of saying, I'm going to set you up for an appointment with your cardiologist, we'll say heart, heart doctor instead. Yeah. Or we're going to send you to radiology, we'll say x-ray. So it's just about using plain language. Mm -hmm. Was there anything else you think the viewers need to know? about health literacy? I think that teach back method is so important because we know that 80% of what a doctor tells you when you walk out of the office is forgotten. Um, and that's, that's a huge number. And then yeah. half of what you do remember is incorrect. <laughs> so having your doctor ask you to, to tell back what, what they told you and to try to teach that back and say that you know, you're saying the same thing that they are yeah. is so important to help you remember the correct information. Now how can our viewers get more information? from the Cleveland Department of Public Health. And um, we have a couple different websites. You can go to the health department's website, which is clevelandhealth.org, um, where we have lots of information on the Healthy Cleveland website as well, healthycle.org. Um, you can also email us. It's info at healthycle.org, um, or any of our social media sites, Healthy CLE. Well, just And also, oh, yes. I'm sorry, oh, yes, also yes. on our uh, St. Vincent Charity website, we have a Health Literacy Institute with information. And on the state level, we have um, a website, ohiohealthliteracy.org. 
and that website is set up specifically um, for community clients, providers, and then organizations with a, a lot of resources. That's great. A lot of useful sites that everyone mm -hmm. can check out. Mm -hmm. Jessica and Karen, thank you so much for being here and for all this great information. And don't change that channel because when we come back, we're going to have Tiffany Ashley from Moms First further discussing health literacy when we return to Healthy Cleveland. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. Got a quarter? Welcome back to Healthy Cleveland. I'm your host, Leah Haslidge, and our topic today is health literacy. With us is Tiffany Ashley, who is the case manager with Moms First with the Cleveland Department of Public Health. Welcome, Tiffany. Thank you. Let's start off by talking about what is Moms First. Well, Moms First is a home visiting education and support program for women in the city of Cleveland. We are funded to reduce the infant mortality rate and the racial disparities. Unfortunately, Right now, they, we are losing three black babies to every one white baby in the city. Well, actually in the state. In the city, it is six to one. So, we assist in decreasing their stress while they're pregnant. We do things like giving them bus tickets to go to uh, doctor's appointments. We are, we're like their a backbone, like an extra friend. Yeah. And we do things like, you know, we do screenings for depression and we make sure they have resources and we do referrals out to other things that would benefit the entire family. So you're an extension of the family. Absolutely. We become part of the family. And you said you have home visits. Yes. What does that entail? A home visit. We go out to the home at least twice a month to just check on them to see if they need anything, to see what's going on, to watch the progress of the child and so forth, yes. Now, what exactly um, are some of the causes for infant mortality? Well, the three main causes are prematurity, um, sleep-related, and birth defects. And a lot of these things are brought on by stress. Right. Well, now, when you say stress, what are you, what are you? The stress of the, the family, of the mom. It could be financial stress, um, where they're gonna live at, how they're gonna eat, jobs, racial issues, it's so many different things. So many things. Right. Now, how does health literacy relate to your work? Well, a lot of clients, of course, have to go to the doctor. And there are times when they go to the doctor and they have no idea what the doctor has told them. So they'll come back and they'll ask us. And it's a great thing that they trust us. Yeah. However, we're not the healthcare professionals. So they'll ask us questions and we're trying to prep them to go back to ask the doctor questions so they can get a better understanding. How has the staff from Moms First been trained in oh, health literacy? Of course, we've been trained several times over the years. But just this February, it was a, we had a Master's of um, Public Health student who trained us on the three keys, which is like plain language, it's just simple language so they can understand, um, teach back, which is asking what they heard so that they can also, it, it, it's also for us, so we know that we're giving them the right information yeah. and they heard it the right way. And then there are the three questions, what, ask three, which are asking, you know, what is the main purpose, what do I need to do, and um, why is it important? Now, is there a success story that you can share with us? Sure, I had a client who, um, a participant who went to the doctor and she told one of my community health workers, that the doctor told her that she was gonna have to have a C-section because her baby was going to be <laughs> too fat because she just ate all the wrong things. So we're like, 
really? Okay. So I talked to the community health worker and I said, you know what, encourage, you know, ask her if it's okay if we come to the appointment with you. Yeah. And so we can understand what the doctor is actually telling her, you know, and that worked out. So the, the community health worker was able to go out with her so she can ask the right questions. And what it was was they were worried about gestational diabetes during pregnancy. Oh. And so she heard bits and pieces, but that's not what the doctor told her. And that's probably very common with, it's very with common. your clients. Yes. Now, um, I had asked Jessica and Karen earlier, but what do you think is the biggest misconception when it comes to health literacy, but especially pertaining to infant mortality? Is that it won't happen to you. Or that people think that because they're educated or their financial status is different, that it won't happen to them, but it will. And it happens to everyone. Is there anything you think viewers should know about Moms First and infant mortality? Yes, Moms First is a great program. Um, we have, right now we have seven sites. It's Merrick House, Ohio Guidestone, Friendly End, Harvard Community Center, Lexington Bell. Then we have the Neon site that covers um, jail, the jail component. Mm -hmm. And then we have May Dugan who covers the teen component. Okay. Okay, and then, so we have monthly consortiums every month that covers different educations. It's like a, a luncheon, so to speak, and we just invite the community and everybody to get involved because we need all the help that we can get to make the infant mortality numbers decrease so that every baby can get to their first birthday and beyond. Does Moms First have volunteers? We do. We, have, we also have community ambassadors that we're mm -hmm. looking for, so anybody that's interested in the community that wants to be a part of this movement, please get in contact with us. What would an ambassador do? What, what does that entail? Just like going into the community and talking about what's going on with Moms First or just going, what's going on with infant mortality, period. Okay. Now, how can the viewers get more information on the Moms First program? You can look up us, momsfirst.org, on the internet. Our number is also 216-664-4194. And social media? Yeah. Momsfirst.org. Yes, we're all, we're everywhere. And, and if you see us with these purple coats on, stop us. Talk to us. We're very friendly. That's great. You are very friendly. And thank, thank you so you. much for being here, Tiffany. It was a pleasure to meet you and to meet great you information. Too. And of course, you can find all this information on our blog, tv20cleveland.com. Thanks for watching Healthy Cleveland. I'm Leah Haslidge. Till next time.